So today we are talking about upper trap development. For this occasion only I picked a shirt where I showcased that I don't have any development here at all. So as you can see no matter how I flex them they are just not there. So I consider them very underdeveloped. So first of all let's start with my training history. So in the last two years I did follow a full body program so three times per week monday wednesday friday a standard one and if i analyze here the muscles that i did work so here i have a summary and if i'm looking here at upper traps it was zero so zero hard sets in the given week for them so i didn't do any specific movements for them then i developed a 2.0 version of this program the full body in which I incorporated more hypertrophy training but once again I see at the summary upper traps zero. So that's the reality for the last two years and also or I would say the last decade I have neglected this muscle group significantly only sporadically from time to time I did some training. So here's the program 3.0 it's the upper lower six day split in which I have incorporated the movement for the upper traps. So first of all, I want to show you how I have programmed them. So I will be training them three times per week on Tuesday, on Thursday and on Saturday. So I have programmed them in my lower body day and I will be doing only one exercise for them. It's the barber shrug. So I will be doing five sets each time. Rep range is from 15 to 20. So as you can see here, this programmed on Tuesday and it will be performed in a superset with leg extensions and leg curls. So for example I will be done with my leg extension the first set then I will do some shrugs and so on. Then I will move on to leg curls and after the leg curls I will do the shrugs once again. And the frequency is three times per week so I will be doing it on Tuesday on the lower body workout. Then I will do it on Thursday. Normally that will be a rest day but because the traps, the upper traps will be a very high priority for me. I decided to put them here on Thursday once again because it's a high priority. Set and rep scheme is the same, but I will start with them and I will do a super set here with calf raises. And then on Saturday, it's the same thing. So I will be doing them in a super set with leg extensions and leg curls. Once again, five sets. And here's the total breakdown of the weekly volume upper traps as you can see it will be 15 sets in a week so from 0 to 15 that's a major change for sure so i did show you how i plan to train the upper traps and now i will go in depth into these very important details so from my history i didn't train traps specifically in the past once in the blue moon i did for example some dumbbell shrugs and pretty much that's it for direct work. I cannot measure them with the tape so I will just have to go from visual changes and they will be a very high priority for me. That's why I will focus them that much and basically I want to develop here the upper part of the traps so they will get bigger. Also that's why I'm training the neck so here I will focus on this upper area which is underdeveloped as of now. So when it comes down to programming if it's a very high importance muscle group for me, I will train it three times per week. That's why, as you did see on the split, if you are running a five day upper lower version with only two lower days, that's why I did at the beginning. And it was just not enough for the upper traps. I really wanted to push the frequency to three times per week. That's why on first day, this will be the day where I will be doing them. Now, when it comes down to volume, the traps, the upper traps, they are very resilient. They can take a lot of beating. So I think doing here a high volume approach is a good option because they can take a lot of damage. So I think in the session, you can go up to like five hard sets. And if you do this two or three times per week, so that's like 10 to 15 sets per week. That's how I would set it up. Now, when it comes down to the rep range, I did choose from 15 to 20 and that's only because I don't want to screw up my lower back which is very prone to injuries so that's why I want to work with a little bit lower intensity here so not use that much weight but if you don't have any problems with your lower back 
I think you can go in a lower rep range, somewhere from like 10 to 15. That would be a good idea. But that's personal preference for me. That's why I did choose here the high rep range. Then it comes down to the exercise selection. So I think at the very bottom tier would be a cable shrug at the cable machine on the low cable. For the traps, keep in mind, it's very important to focus on the heavy stretch. So you will shrug up and then you will let the heavy weight pull your traps under. And basically that's the most important part which will develop your traps, the heavy stretched negative. And when you are doing it on the cable machine, the weighted stretch will be just minimal. Now I think a little bit better would be a dumbbell shrug with a neutral grip to the sides. But the problem that I did face with dumbbells is first of all, you are limited by the weight. So if you are going to the gym, you can grab up to like 50 kg dumbbells. And at home, I have these big plates. So I'm holding the dumbbells with the big plates. So that's not convenient for me. Also, I have to pick them up. So I'm picking one dumbbell, bending to the side, picking up another dumbbell, bending to the side. It can put unnecessary stress on my lower back once again. And when you are shrugging, you are holding the dumbbells here in a neutral grip to the sides. And when you are shrugging, they are kind of rolling up of your thigh. So that takes away from the tension, in my opinion here, especially if you are using such weights like I do and they can spin here. So they are not fixated. So that takes away from the training. And you also, while performing the shrugs, you don't want to keep your arms completely here straight. Basically, you want to have them a little bit to the side like 30 degrees in a abduction state and only then you'll shrug up. But with the dumbbells, the weight is pulling you up closer to the body. That's why I don't find them that effective. Now moving up a level further and that will be the exercise that I'm doing right now. It's the barbell shrug with the straight bar and the barbell is in front with a pronated grip. So double overhand, I'm using also straps. Then I'm taking the arms a little bit to the side in this 30 degree subduction and then I'm shrugging. The trick here is not to keep your body completely straight because the bar will get in your way. So you need to hinge at hips like 10 degrees and that way you won't have any problems here. However, this is not the best movement for the upper trap development. It's a good movement, but you can go even beyond that. So I did order a trap bar. So that way I can still work it with the barbell, but I will then have the benefit of the neutral grip. So I expect it to get in a month. I'm working with weights that have a 30 millimeter diameter. So it's not a standard trap bar. So I did order it overseas in the UK. So I had to dig a lot. So basically the same company that made this bench rack luckily had also one for 30 millimeters so i'm waiting for it that will be top notch at the very top doing the shrugs with the trap bar also if you are working out in the gym environment some gyms have a machine for doing shrugs so if you have such a machine that you can place hands at your side in a neutral grip and the weight is dangling there and you can start shrugging. So that's also a very good solution. So that's exercise selection. For now, I am stuck with the straight bar, but I will get the trap bar soon. Now, when it comes down to isolation lifts versus camper lifts for the upper trap development, a lot of people are mentioning that, for example, deadlifts, bent over rows, the variations from them are enough to develop here huge upper traps. The problem for me is I never deadlifted and bent over rows, I didn't perform them at a 45 degree angle, let's say, or a Yates row where you are more upright. So I didn't perform these movements because my lower back is weak. So I had to do like cable rows or dumbbell rows. And I always focused when rowing, keeping the elbows to the side and rowing towards my belly button. So that emphasizes more of the mid back the lats. So if you did perform some variations where the elbows are a little bit flared when rowing, rowing not to the lower belly button, but more up here, then yeah, then the mid back works, a little bit of the upper back more, then you can hit the traps. 
or if you perform the Yates row, for example, deadlift, then you can get some upper trap development, for sure. But I think only to a certain degree. But then you must incorporate an isolation lift, like the shrug, be it trap bar, straight bar, a machine, only then you can full development there. So I would say it's like a 50-50 split somewhere down the line, maybe towards 60-40, 70-30, more in favor of the isolation. Another great idea is performing a power shrug. So that means you will be using your lower body to propel the weight up in the contracted position and then you can use more weight like this and then you let the weight do the weighted stretch. So then you will be comfortable with the movement and I would say either a barbell or a machine you can delve into the realm of power shrugs. Now in terms of super setability, I think it's not that much of a fatiguing lift, while it's much more fatiguing compared to some other isolations for the calves, for the forearms, for the neck, for example. I still do think you can superset it, and a good idea would be to superset it, with, for example, with calves, forearms, some neck, even biceps, triceps could be a good idea. Or as I'm doing it with some leg extensions, leg curls. So it's not like you will be very gassed after performing them. You can sneak in here a superset. So yeah, that's regarding the upper trap training. So it will be very interesting to see because I did switch from zero all the way up to 15 weekly sets. And this muscle group should respond very fast to new stimulus. Basically, I'm still at my newbie face when it comes to trap development. So I will just observe how I will change visually and I will update you from time to time. And I'm really looking forward to getting the trap bar. So the next video you can watch this here, I'm explaining my maximum hypertrophy series of how I'm changing up my training altogether for hypertrophy. And I hope you have enjoyed watching this video. See you soon next time, bye.